Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football Dill Sunday afternoon. It's officially game week, Florida State, Georgia Tech in Ireland. This is a fascinating game for week zero. I think a lot of college football fans are excited about this one. Want to get into kind of some key matchups that we're going to see play out week zero in Ireland. Obviously, give our game predictions as well. Now, before we get into it, and as always, one let it fly in the comment section. This is the best part about doing game predictions, hearing from you guys in the comment section, whether you agree with the boys, whether you disagree, let it fly in the comment section. We'll talk a lot of football down there. And if y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. This is certainly a game that we will recap right after we see it because Dill, I, this Georgia Tech team is going to be fun. I don't know if they're going to be competing for an ACC championship, but when you have Haynes King, Jamal Haynes, Eric Singleton, all on the same offense. I mean, there are some explosive pieces to this Georgia Tech offense. And then you look at Florida State, it is, it's a lot of new faces, but we're pretty confident that Mike Norvell has this program going in the right direction. And we're kind of confident that a lot of these new faces are going to be really good football players for Florida State. Let's start with this Georgia Tech offense against this Florida State defense. And Dill, I think the first kind of key matchup you got to talk about It's no secret what Georgia Tech's going to do on the offense side of football. They're going to run the football. Obviously, Haynes King, a phenomenal dual threat quarterback with one of the better running backs in the ACC and Jamal Haynes. Georgia Tech running the football against this Florida State defense. How are we feeling about it? I mean, I think this will be a monster test for DJ Lundy. And I think we've talked about that's kind of your one big question in my mind about this Florida State program is what is this linebacker room going to be? You lose two guys in Bethune and obviously Deloach, who are so good, so consistent and steady. I think you look at what Georgia Tech likes to do attacking teams. It's a, it's kind of like a lot of eye candy, a lot of complexity, a lot of you got to cover the whole field. And again, DJ Lundy's really showed himself to be a really effective in-the-box linebacker, but that's just not what you can be essentially against Georgia Tech. You need to be able to cover the whole field. You need to be able to recognize stuff quickly, deal with quarterbacks, deal with tight ends, deal with running backs, deal with jet sweeps from the wideouts. It's just a lot coming at him. That's what I'm going to be looking at. I think we'll see early whether DJ Lundy's really going to step up to the plate and be that guy for Florida State. I, I was actually thinking I'm really confident that Florida State has DJ Lundy here. I think he might be the most important player in this matchup because you look at DJ Lundy, what do we know he can do? He can stop the run. Now, I think you make a really good point. DJ Lundy, really good inside the tackle box. Does he have the burners? Does he have the range to kind of go sideline to sideline? That is certainly something – that we'll, we'll, we'll be looking for. I think there are a couple of different ways that Florida State on defense could potentially deal with this Georgia Tech rushing attack. And I think it first starts with when you have what I think is an elite cornerback duo, really just an elite secondary heading into 2024, can you start walking some safeties into the box, right? If you trust AZ Thomas and Fentrell Cypress to kind of hold up on islands, knowing they'll be okay, and we know Georgia Tech's going to run the football, can you walk in some of those safeties? Can you give seven, eight man boxes and maybe stop the run that way against Georgia Tech when you have so much trust in these cornerbacks on the outside? And that's another thing you kind of got to look for from Georgia Tech is I think their wideouts do some things well, but that catching that deep ball and being consistent through that, I kind of wonder who that real elite boundary guy is going to be for them. I thought Eric Singleton had good moments for sure last year dropped a handful of footballs that I really don't think you can drop in this type of game because they got to be on, obviously. But do they have the wideouts to punish teams in the way that kind of allows teams to play a little less aggressive and not walk everyone up? Because that's kind of what I'm looking for. They have a lot of talent, but who's going to emerge to be that one real X factor on the edge? I love Malik Rutherford in slot. I think he's a lead at what he does. But who's going to be that guy on the boundary to really – yeah, can you line up against AZ Thomas and be like, I can I can really challenge Yeah, him. I mean, Eric Singleton would be the guy. I mean, as a freshman last year, that kid was incredible. I think he was one of the kind of underrated storylines in the ACC. I mean, there are some legitimate weapons. I think you're right. Can Georgia Tech find more consistency pushing the ball down the field? I mean, you look at Haynes King in general, it's just a, a quarterback that has a lot of highs and a lot of lows. I mean, take a look at 2023. He led the ACC in passing touchdowns. And you also had the ACC and interceptions. And so can Jordan, and I think that's kind of the storyline for this Georgia Tech team in general in 2024 is, hey, we know we're going to have a good rushing attack. Can we find a little bit more consistency with Haynes King as a passer? That's kind of how Georgia Tech takes that step going into 2024, Bill. I think the final storyline between this matchup is controlling Haynes King as a scrambler. I mean, they'll use Haynes King on some – 
you know, design quarterback runs, if you will. And Haynes King does a lot of damage, ran for over 700 yards last year. A lot of that production came off getting outside the pocket and scrambling. A couple of different ways you could handle it. One, spies with the linebackers, right? Someone like DJ Lundy or Cam Riley. I think more importantly, you know, pass rush integrity from guys like Patrick Payton and Marvin Jones Jr., who we know want to attack the outside shoulder and really run that loop. Maybe you have to say, hey, we're not going to pin our ears back completely and try to keep Haynes King in the, in the pocket because that's when Haynes King struggles a little bit, right? When you let him get outside the pocket, start playing a little bit of backyard football, that's when he's at its best. I think you got to be really disciplined with how you're getting after Haynes King to kind of keep him in the pocket because that's really when he doesn't play his best football. And that's another thing I think for Florida State is you have super athletic edges. So not only dealing with Haynes King and being able to chase him down and deal with him, but also in that rushing attack where, again, a lot of it is going to the perimeter and trying to catch defensive ends kind of sleeping when you're a little bit more athletic, have a little bit more of that ability to play in space. So, again, I think you look at Marvin Jones Jr. Obviously, we haven't seen a ton of him yet, but you see the athletic traits. Patrick Payton, obviously super athletic. And then even if he can work a guy like Sione Lilea inside and let him, again, just add some athleticism into that room. Because I just don't really see Georgia Tech just pounding this Florida State team, like just physically beating them up. I think that kind of plays into what Florida State, frankly, wants to do, just given the like probably talent differential at the end of the day. But I do think that that gives Florida State the opportunity to put their guys in better positions athletically, at least to kind of handle this Georgia Tech game. Two things that I would kind of wrap up on with the Florida State defense going up against this Georgia Tech offense. One, I'm going to be really interested to see the depth on the inside of the defensive line for for George or for Florida State, excuse me, where I, I know Daryl Jackson, Joshua Farmer are dudes. We haven't seen a ton of a guy like Daniel Lyons, who I know you're a really big fan of getting a lot of positive feedback in fall camp. Grady Kelly coming from Colorado State, a guy like K.J. Sampson. All these guys haven't played a ton of football at the Power 5 level. How do they look in that too deep when you know Georgia Tech's going to run the football? That's one of those question marks I want to see get answered. And I think secondly, can Florida State turn the football over a little bit more? That was one. I mean, Florida State was a lead on defense in 2023. There's no question about that. They were outside the top 100 in turnovers forced. And this is a Georgia Tech team that struggles turning the football over. Can Florida State find the football a couple of times and create some of those game-changing turnovers. Probably the last question mark I'll be looking at with that matchup. Now let's flip sides here, talk this Florida State offense against the Georgia Tech defense that was not good last year, to put it kind of kindly. 31 points per game allowed. And I think the, the frustrating thing about Georgia Tech and my big concern heading into this matchup is I'm not sure how much better they got on defense in the transfer portal. And so I love this offense. I think this Georgia Tech offense is going to be one of the better units in the ACC, but I have some serious question marks about this defense, specifically stopping the run, giving up five and a half yards per carry last year. That was 127th in the country. Then I look at this Florida State offense and say, all right, it's week zero. You have a transfer quarterback. You got a lot of new faces in the wide receiver room. We've been kind of saying this all offseason. I think the identity of this Florida State team is going to be running the football. I think the offensive line is markedly improved from 2023, they're a heck of a lot healthier. you got a ton of good running backs that can do different things, along with DJU, who's kind of a wrecking ball attack in the line of scrimmage. Can this Georgia Tech defense hold up against this Florida State rushing attack, which I think we see a lot on Saturday afternoon? And that'll be the fundamental issue. You kind of look at Georgia Tech, it felt like they were so reliant on Zeke Biggers, who is great. I think he's really, awesome. really good. Yeah. They were relying on Douse as well, who obviously left in the portal. And I just don't think you got enough consistency from everyone else. I don't think Thomas Gore really brings in that type of guy that I think they frankly needed. So I'm kind of with you. That's the one main, main concern I think for Georgia Tech is do they have a good enough defensive line to just play with those big teams that they really didn't have it last year. And again, Bigger's really, really good, but everyone else kind of undersized, not elite in the ways that you need to be elite if you're going to play at that like sub 300 kind of level. Florida State, I think you kind of said it. They now have the running backs. I think they have the quarterback. I think they have the offensive line potentially to play a little bit more physically than they played last year. And I think that's kind of the answer when you want to go move the ball against Georgia Tech. It's try to beat them up and wear them out in the inside. Yeah, I'm happy you shot out Zeke Biggers, though, because I think he's dog. Like, Zeke Biggers is kind of sick. And I, what I think about Thomas Gore is, all right, we saw some good things out of him from Miami in 2023. He's six foot two ninety. You look at the interior offense, offensive line for Florida State. I mean, Richie Leonard goes 6'2", 330. You look at TJ Ferguson, he goes 6'4", 330. 
I mean, it, it's there's some big bodies up front against a Georgia Tech defensive line that you kind of said it best. A, a guy like Thomas Gore is giving up 40, 50 pounds on some of these guys. And it's just not deep enough. I mean, Zeke Biggers, again, he's really, really good, but I just don't know that you – have a yeah. ton of tr- faith in the guys coming behind them. And I also think I'm very curious <laughs> to what this linebacker room for Georgia Tech is going to be because they lose a lot of guys. And obviously they do return some decent players. I think you saw decent things from Kyle Efford, but he's not an elite athlete. And that's kind of what you wonder, again, with the way Florida State can attack you a little bit with some guys like a Jalen Lucas even. I think you got to be a little bit more – got to be able to play the perimeter a little bit more effectively. I thought you saw some some – them give that up a little bit against UCF even in that bowl game. So, again, that's kind of the question. I think Florida State will probably have a little bit of trouble throwing the ball easily, not to say that they'll get stalemated. I just really wonder if this Georgia Tech team can stop the run. That's my question and my kind of second question. I don't know if it's a massive storyline in this game, but just for Florida State going into 2024, is that if Georgia Tech wants to walk in their safeties, can we win vertically down the field with – you know, DJU, who we're pretty confident in heading into 2024, but a lot of new faces, guys like Malik Benson, guys like Hakeem Williams, guys that we haven't seen a ton of production from, but are really, really talented. I think that's going to be the recipe for Florida State is, hey, we're going to run the football a lot and lean on this rushing attack. And then we're going to try to push the ball down the field vertically using stuff like play action. Can you see Florida State get to some of those concepts on Saturday? That's kind of something I'm looking for, not only in this Especially story. having replacing your two cornerbacks from last year who were really good for Georgia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But even in the scope of Florida State in the 2024 year, like I'm just kind of interested to see if they can find that blend. Before we get into the game predictions, though, players of the game. Most important player for Florida State, most important player for Georgia Tech, who you got? I'm just going to say the second linebacker, and whether it's Cam Riley, whether it's an LJ Cryer, I don't necessarily know who Florida State's going to be trotting out there at that spot, but I think they're going to need to be huge because, again, I think we're pretty comfortable with what Lundy's going to be. You yeah. probably want to see what he's going to do against a Georgia Tech team that doesn't necessarily play into his strength with the amount of attacking the perimeter they're going to do. But I'm looking. I think you need to have really good linebacker play, whether that's dealing with Haynes King or really anyone else on this team because they all run the ball pretty effectively. I think the second linebacker needs to be great, and I think that's probably my – not only in this game, but that's going forward, I think, going to be a huge one for Florida State. Yeah, F- Florida State for me – mine was DJ Lundy, so I guess I'll just take DJ Lundy. The linebackers are going to be massive in this Georgia Tech game because, again, you said it best to kind of start this one off. A lot of misdirection, a lot of eye candy, a lot of stuff outside the tackles. And if you're a step late, like they have the athletes to really punish you. I think, again, like everyone tries to do misdirection, but if you don't have an elite running quarterback, you don't have elite running backs and elite wide receivers who really carry the ball effectively, it doesn't exasperate itself as much. I think when teams are out of position in Georgia Tech, they can really hurt you. 100%, and I think for Georgia Tech, it's Z Biggers. Z Biggers is – the Florida State's going to run around the football. And can Georgia Tech have the bodies on the inside to somewhat stop Florida State? That's the biggest question, Dill. Let's get into the game prediction here. Florida State, Georgia Tech in Ireland, 11 and a half points. Who are you taking? I lean Florida State because I think that – I, I almost think this should be a 14-point spread, frankly. I mean, again, Florida State, like, they're not acting – or I guess Vegas isn't treating them like anything near what Florida State I was. Think Florida State, Vegas, Vegas is treating Florida State like, hey, we want to see it from you guys. We they're saying they're that. back to, like, early Norvell, Florida State. I mm-hmm. think Norvell's got this – I think he's got it cooking. I think he's got the culture in place. I think they kind of believe in themselves in the way that you need to to go pound teams that are – kind of have a talent gap, if you will. Not to say, like, Georgia Tech's talent gap is huge, but I think there still exists that. I think, again, Brian Key does feel like he's kind of changing that a bit. But right now, I think the talent gap's big enough where a confident Florida State team that I think they are at this point under Mike Norvell, I think should be should be fine. Coming. Yeah, and I, I look at it, it might be Vegas. That being said, I think they're just giving a lot of respect to Georgia Tech, which I, I kind of agree with. I think this Georgia Tech team is extremely dangerous, and it's week zero in Ireland. Like, I, I wouldn't be comfortable taking Florida State to cover two touchdowns either, quite frankly. I'm going to take Florida State as well if it's inside of two touchdowns. It's actually moved from 12 and a half and some 13s out there to 11 and a half. I'll take Florida State as well. This isn't a game that I'm rushing over to bet because, again, it's week zero in another continent. That being said, I think the matchups for Florida State – I lean Florida State. I think this Georgia Tech team is extremely dangerous. It's going to be an extremely fun game to watch as a college football fan. 
we'll cut it there. Appreciate you guys rocking with the fellas. Again, if y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Appreciate you guys, and we'll talk to y'all later.